All right, guys, so now I'm gonna be showing you guys some Spider-Man from Insomniac, the uh, trailer here. I'm gonna say this right now, after a few more adjustments, this TV's pretty damn perfect for color out of the box. Like, with just small adjustments, no color corrections needed. Like, holy crap, okay? Did not see it coming. It's pretty perfect. And by pretty perfect, guys, I mean like pretty perfect. Because seriously, I see everything I look for as a professional calibrator, which is isolations of colors into real shades of colors that we would see in our, in our lives. Like as the mask melts away, you see the fire deteriorate into, you know, the accurate shade of orange is supposed to be to the, the various shades of yellow, the skyline, every shade of pink. Uh, I mean, like every little shade in skin tonality from the brown going into the pink of the lips. I mean, like it's, it's perfect. I mean, like it's picture perfect. And, and I can't, I can't say that it's not because it is like out of the box without needing to correct anything it's pretty damn perfect i can only imagine once i actually set this up just how serious the color is actually going to be and that kind of has me happy a little bit now of course there's always room for improvement through calibration but the the takeaway from what i'm saying right now is not only are black levels super inky and deep right now but the contrast is, is amazing. The clarity is amazing. Now, I've turned down the brightness more than what most people buying this TV would probably do, but that's how I was able to get such striking contrast. Now, I have multiple variations of settings that I like to give out through members only kind of access, but need I say, this is just, wow, all right? Like, I'm, I'm feeling it now, all right? Like, the unboxing process is definitely rough. It's tough stuff, for real. You know, but at the end of the day, you're looking at the picture quality and it's something that I immediately connected with my Sony A8G in picture quality. And I truly believe this will hold its own quite well to the Sony A8G and either other Sony televisions like the Sony X900E, which I'll do a comparison on later on. Um, I'm just gonna say this right now though, the image is just breathtaking and it looks exactly like it does on the phone on the screen as I'm checking with my eyes going back and forth. So what you're seeing on the phone is basically what you're gonna get. And I'm blown away, like, this is pretty damn good. Like, it's pretty good. Now, obviously, again, as the, the big downside with this TV, the banding's disgusting. The brightness is pretty low for what it is. Of course, I have it set lower here. It does go higher, but it's, it's just not as impressive as obviously some other sets on the market, but let's not let's not jump to the, gut, the the end of the game here it's not the end you know we're still we're still doing our thing so it's not game over yet is my point here you know let's not jump to the end of the game let's see it for what it is and right now it's pretty nice now motion not the smoothest thing i've ever seen there is obviously room to improve on motion but i don't see artifacting so that's good there but people are wondering what it's going to look like with these ps5 trailers and i wanted to show you guys that because is breathtaking it truly is and i can only imagine with an actual native 4k you know 60 game it would look even better than this so let's get another trailer up all right so i decided to go with the horizon forbidden west trailer just to show you guys a little bit more of what it looks like um but yeah guys i wanted to show you guys this stuff because i know that a lot of you guys are totally going to be buying this tv for PS5 and the, the, the demand is definitely there obviously for this television in the consumer market and we need to know how it looks. And the, the best thing I love seeing is when out of the box, you don't need to do too much. You can just dial it in a couple directions in either way and it just falls into place without you needing to hire a professional calibrator. This is gonna make this the better option for anybody wondering between the Hisense and the Sony H9, or the Sony, what is it, uh, X900H over the Hisense H9G because the Hisense does need to be calibrated. This does not. That is a big, big value here. And this is also HDMI 2.1. I verified on Sony's website through the specification as referred by some of you guys in the comment section to check that out. And yes, it is HDMI 2.1 at a later date. So I don't know how that's gonna work out. I don't know when they're gonna do it, but it is gonna come eventually. But the point being is that the, the, the SDR performance and the HDR performance does not need calibration for you to have a impactful, or rather an impactful and meaningful experience out of this television. Look at this picture. And I'm looking at it on the phone. The phone's making it a little darker than what it is in reality, um, but 
for the all intents and purposes, it's pretty spot on. It's they look very identical. And that's impressive, man. I mean, like, I didn't calibrate the thing. And that's really like where I love seeing that. Like, cause I know my job just got so much easier, especially because this has auto cal from Calman in it. So, I mean, really, like I can have this thing calibrated in no time at all. And the colors will be even better than what I'm already kind of impressed by right now. And that's before I even take it off the rails and do my advanced calibration and picture setting adjustments to it like I do to make this thing a super mega monster. So I'm like kind of feeling like this is about to be the best TV under $1,000 in 2020. Like as real as it gets as far as picture quality because you don't have to calibrate it and that's huge. So I don't know, man, I'm thinking like $1,000, you're definitely gonna have your drawbacks, but so far the picture is beautiful. Now it's getting a little dark here, try to tap on it. Now of course it's gonna brighten up all the highlights and it's, it's, it's trying. It's doing the best it can, but essentially, I mean, it, it, it's a good looking image. And I think if you're in the market for TV, this is not a bad option at all. I will obviously keep you guys posted on this to see how it does progress, but so far so good. All right, so now we're checking out some Halo Infinite on this and seeing how it looks. Now, as I look again as, at the phone and at the TV, this is pretty much what you get. It's pretty spot on as far as the color science here. and. It's pretty impressive that that's actually the case here, considering I'm just using my cell phone to do this. So yeah, man, it really sucks because I have all this professional equipment and all these nice cameras, but it, it's the, the, the outdoor coating that they put on to cut down on sun glare that really throws off my colors and stuff. Like, I really hate that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to solve it. I'm still studying and practicing uh, videography and trying to really hone the videography part of my skills down because recording TVs are definitely an art form. And I'm slowly mastering it, but it is definitely a learning process. I won't be coy or shy about saying that. But as I look at the picture and as I look at it with my naked eye, they are pretty identical. There is no difference whatsoever in what I'm seeing. So, you know, my S9 is doing pretty good at capturing the color science part very well. Now, as I look at it, it's a little bit more blue on the phone here than what it is in real life. But... It's, it's like nuanced details here and there, but overall the image is there. Now it's darkening quite a bit to try to focus in on this highlight here, and it's still kind of overly bright. There it goes. So, you know, you're gonna have to play this one by eye and see how it works out, but so far so good, man. Um, I'm having an, an amazing experience so far as far as like the early review process as far as looking at color. And so far, these budget TVs have been really damn good for color, man. And that's really impressing me. Like, higher-end TVs are dropping the ball for color, I'm noticing, where these these little budget TVs under $1,000 are really, they're punching hard. Because I'm telling you right now, the, the Sony X950H did not look like this out of the box. And it required a hell of a lot more adjustment than this. And that was just as real as it gets. It was a pain in the ass. And that's just, like, unacceptable for the price range and especially the difference. I mean, like Sony really put themselves in a weird position where it's like, should you even really give their TV a chance at the higher level? Because this is this is pretty good already. And I don't, I don't really know, I don't really know how those downgrades are gonna play out though, because there are some pretty big ones as you guys saw with the banding. But if they fix that with an update, then maybe you're good. But I don't know. So far, so good. Looking, it's looking nice, right? I like that. You got a lot of detail right there coming in. As I look at it, it's a little bit more blue, a little more green on this side, but overall it's pretty accurate. The detail is there, the color is there. And the black levels are inky, it's pitch black right now, even as we go into another scene, which is very important, because normally that's blown out. Now as we get into this scene, the blacks are inky, colors are vibrant, you have good strong highlight detail, but not too much. It's a well-balanced picture so far, and honestly speaking guys, for next-gen consoles, I think the representation will be pretty damn good because looking at these trailers, if the games look anything like these trailers, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. So uh, just, again, trying to honor you guys' request to show you guys what PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X would look like on the Sony X900H. And uh, again, leave your questions, comments, and concerns down below, guys. I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. And I'm going to let this play out but until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Um, again, I know you guys are going to have more questions, so just ask them down below. Um, actually, as I look at it, I'm approaching my 10-minute 
limit here, so I'll have to end the video now, but see you guys later.